the most common question I ever get asked is, Ashley, how do you live inspired? What does that look like? So here I am today. This is exactly what inspiration looks like and smells like. You should be grateful that YouTube has yet to make the video scratch and sniff or smellable because right now you probably would be clicking out of this video. Okay, Ashley, let's get to the topic. What does inspiration look like? Well, first of all, let's talk about the things I've tested in my life that really show me like that's not where inspiration is. That is painful. So example, eat the frog. I lived eat the frog. The concept of do the hardest first in the morning to get it out of the way because your meter of like your dedication, your energy level runs out by the end of the day. So I literally lived that. I forced myself to do the hardest thing every morning, get it out of the way. And I'm not saying it didn't work, but it was painful some days. And some days it was filled with shame and guilt because I didn't eat the frog. And then that thing didn't get done because heaven forbid I do it later. Later in the day, eat the frog tells me that's literally almost impossible. Okay, that's eat the frog. I've tested that. May work for you, didn't work for me. Miracle Morning. Oh, what an absolutely great book. I think there's 5 million renditions of it. That's how complicated it is, that there can't just be one miracle morning for all. There has to be a different miracle morning for entrepreneurs, for dog walkers, for doctors, for nurses. Like there's a million different miracle mornings out there. And again, another beautiful thing that I tested out and loved greatly, except for the days that maybe my miracle morning didn't happen and it turned into a dumpster fire of a day. So in reality, both things, Eat the Frog, Miracle Morning, are probably one of the best selling books out there. Some of the most common like methods people use in order to get to a place of happiness and peace in their life because they're either using it to gain success or find the relationship, become the best person they can. But again, it's person development. So it's very person centered that you know your answers. And as long as you keep yourself round up tight in a specific formula and you get it done, everything is going to be perfect. Holy complicated. And it was, it was so complicated. I would start my miracle morning at like literally four in the morning because that's another concept we're taught. If you get up before everyone else and you can literally have a day's work done before everybody else wakes up, you feel that much greater about yourself. And again, it worked. It worked in moments, but when it didn't work, it didn't work. It was literally, again, a dumpster fire, 100%. So as you know, I've been in this process of really leaning into what does inspired living look like? And I mean, most people are like, you're crazy, Ashley, because what have I done? I've thrown out to-do lists. I've thrown out goals. I've thrown out vision boards. I mean, let's talk for a minute about vision boards and manifesting. That is another place that we believe it, our happiness and peace is contained in the act of utilizing vision boards and utilizing manifestation techniques. And again, it's this complicated structure that if you don't follow it perfectly, it doesn't occur. And then we create more shame and guilt. Or even if you do follow it perfectly, but it wasn't in alignment with inspiration, it doesn't occur. Uh, it doesn't happen. And you're just pushing against the river and it's painful and it creates so much shame and guilt. And you guys, what is our one purpose here? I believe our one purpose is forgiving, whether it's forgiving the one word or forgiving. Like that is our only purpose here. So if we're trying to forgive, that means we're trying to remove the guilt and shame that is already there. So to me, it's counterproductive to partake in anything that we know for a fact is going to have a very high potential of creating more shame and guilt. Okay, so here I'm on this journey. Let me tell you a story of real tangible, how I started this career of running. Yes, you heard right. At the eight, ripe young age of 40, this body has now started a running career. And you're like, what? A running career? You're going to go to the Olympics? My definition of career is it has now become a regular part of my life that I greatly enjoy. Career is not a job. It is not something that provides you success, but just it's a part of your life. And I swore that would never, 
ever be a part of my career. Up until three, I think three months ago is the most recent time I was talking to someone about Patrick. He's a runner. And I, I point like this because he's in the next room. But Patrick is a runner. And I have always said since the day we got together, like, you will not find me running with you. That is your alone time. You go run. So again, I said I would never run. I said three months ago to a woman, if you see me running, you should start running too, because that means I am running from something. Now, don't get me wrong. There's been points in my life where I have dabbled in running, and every single time it was out of these concepts, like Miracle Morning and Eat the Frog and manifesting, envisioning of do things you absolutely hate because your potential only lies on the other side. Do things that are painful because in the pain is the gain. In the misery is the joy. And so I really had lived by that, and running was often something I turn to for like, okay, we're going to lean into something we really hate, we really despise. And the most recent time I did that, I think was about eight or 10 years ago. I ran a couple of 5Ks with friends. I really disliked every single moment of it. I think there was glimpses of runner highs, I think they talk about, where I just couldn't feel my body uh, because it was in so much pain. But I also was a very unhealthy place in my life, mentally. <laughs> let's say it like that's the biggest piece. Emotionally, physically, all of those things as well. But mentally and emotionally and spiritually just like lacking all um, is where I perceived myself to be. So that's how I showed up. Really in this process of unwinding, I see more and more that inspiration is not where we think it is. The joy is not on the other side of the pain. Um, it, it doesn't need to be at least. So back to my running career that I have now begun. I no longer step into these things that are painful, believing that I need to do them in order to become my greatest self. I actually realized that that creates more shame and guilt and more pain and suffering. And, and it, it, it's really counterproductive. That's more personal development, developing yourself as a person, a persona within the illusion, not spirit development. And that plays into all the ego tactics of fear and pain and suffering and separation. So instead, I'm going for an inspired life, a life filled with joy and happiness and the realization that my happiness and joy isn't contained within the illusion, but it's internal because it's outside of the dream. So running, that was not a thought in my mind. Not even a thought in my mind. And about two months ago, I one morning woke up and I had really been leaning into very intentionally leaning into spirit and listening to guidance, even if it seemed a little out of whack. And I work out every day, right? It's not a part of a miracle morning thing because if I miss it, it's not the end of the world. I just listen to the inspired moments in the morning. Am I going to work out? Am I not? And I do it. Most like, probably 95% of the time I do. I go work out. Well, this morning, it was Saturday, and it was supposed to be a, like a very major day for me of Peloton riding. And that's where I, you know, do some of my greatest endurance. And, you know, I love the Peloton because I've always got Allie Love, you know, Sundays with Love. That's my favorite. If she watches this, please do some more Sundays with Love. Please, please, please. But anyway, that is my Saturday. But I woke up, and I, I was sitting on the couch, and I'm like, I'm not feeling it today. Like, I am not feeling it. And at first, the old mentality of Miracle Morning and eat that frog and all this started to come to my head and be like, oh my gosh, if you don't do that, like your day's going to be shit and blah, blah. And I was like, whoa, dumpster fire ahead. We don't live that way anymore. This is inspiration coming in. This is an avoidance. And if you tell me that you don't know the difference between avoidance and just like following inspiration, then we've got a whole nother video for you that I've got to do of really getting to know yourself. So anyway, I knew in that moment of like, oh, whoa, 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 no, this is some, this is not avoidance. This is not me being lazy or, you know, all those words we've been taught that that's what it is. This is just, just me, uh, the guidance coming in. And so I listen, I'm like, okay. And then all of a sudden it was like, let's go walk along the bay. And I was like, okay. And I told Patrick, we usually go to the gym together on Saturdays. And I was like, I'm going to go for a walk along the bay. And he's like, oh, I don't want to go. And I was like, all right, I'm going to go by myself. And I'm walking along the bay. And all of a sudden this thought in my head comes in and is like, let's go running. And mind you, there's been moments of joking with Patrick and my friend Kelly of like, I'm going to become a runner 
tomorrow. I'm going to become a runner this fall, right? Because the weather in Florida sucks in the summer. So I'm going to become a runner then, right? We're always doing it tomorrow, which tomorrow never comes because we only have the present moment. And it was always a joke, right? Like I was never going to become a runner. This body was not made to run. Um, and so I'm walking along the bay and the thought of like, let's start running comes to my head. And I'm like, what? No, 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 no. That's funny. Funny, funny, funny. And then I came again. And then I came again. And it wasn't this thought of like, let's lean into something you hate. Let's do something you hate. It was just this very light, easeful thought. And what is inspiration? It's leaning into the ease. And all of a sudden, like, I, you guys, I'm not lying. My body just started running. And I am like, what in the absolute heck is going on? This body is running. And it's loving every second of it. And I was just like on cloud nine in so much love. And was like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm a runner. This is my career. This is my day one of my career as a runner. And I just, I really soaked in the moments of like, this is inspired living. Because I allowed myself to lean into something that went against so many different things along the way, right? Went against my miracle morning and the potential dumpster fire. It went against eat the frog. Went against all these things that I could have said was avoidance and forced myself to go ride the Peloton. Or when I was walking along the bay, I could have fought that ease of thought of beginning to run and stopped that body from starting. But I just got the heck out of the way. That is inspired living, my friend. Inspired living is not knowing what is going to happen moment to moment and being open to the guidance you are given. Jacob Collier says he's like, literally, my only job here is to get out of my own way, to move out of the way for the true Jacob to come through, which is Ashley, the persona, to move out of the way so spirit can be vesseled through. And let me tell you, the smiles and the high fives in my mind I was getting were just absolutely mind-blowing. And then, of course, I started my career too quick and was like right out the line, like an amazing. I thought I was running like six minute miles, you guys, because I had this watch on. And Patrick and I actually had an argument because I was like, no, maybe this has always been a hidden gift I had of running and I can just run six minutes, miles. And he's like, Ashley, no, like I ran track. You don't know how big of a deal. I'm like, whatever, whatever, until we found out it was kilometers. Okay. Let's be honest, it was kilometers, but it still, I think, contributed to my running career of me just having this massive, like, drive and, like, awe and wonder and curiosity like a child. Because even me being like, oh, my gosh, I'm doing six-minute miles, it was just like this, like, newness, new discovery, which it took us about four, three, four runs for us to realize. So I think it was just enough runs for me to continue the love, but to really lean into that curiosity and wonder, which again goes to show you how powerful perception is and how powerful, how easily we can be influenced. But that is what inspired living is. And then I got injured and, and I had to take some weeks off. But because my act of my career beginning as a runner became through an inspired moment, it was like the career that doesn't matter if it's there tomorrow because tomorrow doesn't exist. And it's a career of every day of inspiration. If I never got inspired to run again, okay, whatever. Right? I might be a little like, what's going on here? If I got injured tomorrow and can never run again, I'd be like, well, this is odd. Like, I thought I had started this career of running, but okay, I guess not. Right? That is the difference between creating a miracle morning or creating a habit of eating the frog or making vision boards or manifesting. Those all have expected outcomes. Right? They all have expected outcomes. My career of running is just an inspired moment that occurred and continues to occur day to day, right? Like I ran yesterday and then yesterday I was like, whoa, I want to run tomorrow. And I woke up this morning. I kind of was like, maybe I won't run. And I was like, yeah, I will run. But it is never expected. 
It is never expected of myself that I will run. And there is no expectation of an outcome of what this running looks like other than I know right now in this moment, I am so in love with running. Like I want to be done with this video and go run again. But reality is I know this fake illusionary body, it, it, it needs like some breaking in days. And Patrick has to constantly remind me of that because I just want to be like, yes, let's hit those six minute miles because now I feel like I can do it because it's just like this, this possibility. But so when people ask me, what is inspired living? What does it look like to live inspired, Ashley? Here's the secret sauce. So listen up. So I want to tell you, first of all, the difference between the definition of simple and easy, because I think we often get it. It's so confused. So easy means something that's achieved without effort. Simple means something that's uncomplicated and easily understood, but it cannot be achieved without effort. So ultimately, this living of living inspired is not like easy by any means, but it is super simple. It's as simple as allowing yourself to be guided, right? And sometimes that guided isn't easy, what you're guided to, but it's allowing yourself to receive the guidance. And you're like, well, what, how the heck do I know the guidance? If you feel ease, if it sparks joy, that's what you do. We've been so taught to lean into the things that provide fear and pain and all this stuff. And the more I'm unwinding, the more I'm like, shit, the greatest moments I'm having is when I lean into the joy and find spirit and remember spirit, not find spirit's not lost. I am spirit. But when I remember what I truly am and the only times I ever remember that is in times of joy, I'm not sitting in this massive pain on my floor being like, oh, wow, this is spirit, team spirit, right? No, that is all ego. Spirit might be in there trying to help walk me through, but I, the, the, I am fully in the ego. So if you want to live an inspired life, first step is to just start paying attention to those moments that you push through the pain instead of leaning into the joy. Bring awareness to that. And maybe if you feel inspired, lean into the joy. Try it. Just try it once. Try to, when you feel like you have to do something, don't do it. If you feel this discomfort, if you feel this like massive weight on doing it. And the more you do that, the more you realize the things that are meant to get done will get done. And they will all get, always get done with ease and inspiration no matter if you push or not. It's just the dependence is how long you sit in discomfort before it gets done versus allowing yourself to sit in ease and just wait until it's time for it to get done. That's what inspired living is. Inspired living is throwing out the plans, throwing out the goals, and just allowing yourself to be guided in the moment. Yeah, you can have thoughts of what you want it to look like in the future, but you still, I don't know. I mean, ultimately, I might be making you a video in a year saying like, now, don't even, all we have is the here and now, always. And today at running, I was also reminded of that. I think it was a prompt actually that I thought of doing this video is Patrick and I were kind of arguing before we left about our bird red, which is so funny. Um, and, and him getting berries and another bird coming in, whatever, that's a whole, a whole conversation that is just hilarious that we are allowing the ego to come in in those moments. But I left and I forgot my sunglasses and it's sunny along the bay for a run. And, and I was running and my way out, the sun was against my back. So it's fine. And the way back, the sun was in my eyes and I realized like, crap, what is this show? This is showing me to stay in the present because so often when I'm running, I'm looking way far ahead of me into the future. When I couldn't see because I was blinded by the light, all I could see was the next crease in the sidewalk. That's where I wanted to get to. That's where I wanted to get to. That's where I wanted to get to. And it just fully sunk me into the present. And I, it was almost like I wasn't even tired because I wasn't thinking about where I had been. I wasn't thinking about where I was going. I was only thinking about the one thing I could see, which was the next crease in the sidewalk.
So if you want to live an inspired life, friend, what I have found it to be is to lean into the joy, be open to the guidance, and know it is as simple as listening and allowing, but it's not always easy and it doesn't always make sense. And the reason why is because this illusion that we've learned to live in has made us believe these insane ideas. So when the sanity of the spirit comes through, it's going to seem insane to us because it's opposite. But step one, bring awareness. When are you leaning into the hard? When are you leaning into the painful things that you absolutely don't want to do and you feel much resistance to? instead of the joy. And in those moments, I invite you to at least test it out once and to not push yourself to do the thing that you're feeling great resistance to, but instead to lean into the joy and see what happens, see what presents itself. Ah, so much love, friend. That is today's, I don't know, parable of Ashley, what is inspired living, whatever you want to call it. But again, be so grateful you cannot smell this video because I need to shower so badly. And as always, make sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications. And thank you so much, friend, for tuning in. And remember, you are worth it. Bye-bye.